Good evening. My name is Natalie Caulfield, and I'm here tonight to represent Natural Resources Canada, a federal department at the forefront of the government of Canada's economic reconciliation agenda. I'm thrilled to be here tonight, both in my capacity as a dedicated and very jubilant public servant, as well as a proud Indigenous woman from the Algonquin Pikwaknagan First Nation, to speak about this very important topic with this very impressive lineup. This may come as a shock, but as the federal government, we are not always the quickest to move, and we can at times be risk averse. But when it comes to economic reconciliation and making progress on concrete outcomes, this is a policy space receiving a ton of attention right now, and for very good reason. We are seeing demand for many of Canada's natural resources continue to grow exponentially. Think LNG, critical minerals, hydrogen, clean technology, forestry, and so on. But as we work to establish Canada as a global leader in these sectors, the stakes for respectful relationships with Indigenous peoples, communities, and businesses has never been higher. Against the backdrop of the United Nations Declaration for the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, we are taking cues from Indigenous-led calls to action to define what it takes to achieve economic reconciliation and natural resources. Likewise, Canadian industry has really raised the bar for meaningful partnerships and engagement with Indigenous communities on projects. There is a willingness to engage communities early and throughout the life cycle of projects to offer jobs and other financial benefits dedicated directly to communities, and even to provide equity for communities to purchase stakes in projects. And now it is our turn, as the Government of Canada, to step up and play a bigger role in this space. We can't be serious about our commitment to advance reconciliation with Indigenous partners until we take action to ensure that natural resources sectors, which is the largest private employer of Indigenous peoples in Canada, provide long-term prosperity, energy security, and economic benefits. So with this in mind, and to answer the question of tonight's theme, how can the government support a brighter economic future for Indigenous peoples in Canada, I want to provide just a few of our lessons learned, which are now shaping how we work moving forward. First, we have learned that priority setting does not take place in a vacuum or in silos. A sustainable natural resources development future can only be achieved when we align our priorities with the vision set by Indigenous peoples and work in lockstep. For example, through the regional energy and resource tables, we are directly engaging communities across Canada to understand their energy goals and are designing place-based action plans to make sure that these goals become a reality. Second, we are moving away from a, a prescriptive approach to working with Indigenous communities and change the relationship dynamic from one of funder-recipient to one of partner-to-partner. -partner. And it is through this kind of Indigenous-led approach that we can build long-term, sustained, and iterative relationships that allow us to support Indigenous groups in defining what energy sovereignty and economic prosperity means to them. In another example, through the Indigenous Natural Resources Partnerships Program, which are on the surface looks like a run-of-the-mill funding program, we are providing capacity to support Indigenous communities, organizations, and businesses to unlock a wide array of innovative economic opportunities and natural resources, including, for example, the development of Indigenous decision-making frameworks regarding equity investments and natural resources, business capacity support to explore equity ownership in major projects, Indigenous-centered critical minerals literacy training, and the implementation of Indigenous-led climate action plans that work in to position Indigenous communities and organizations as leaders in a decarbonized economy. And finally, we are moving into a new era where Indigenous peoples, communities, and businesses have seats at the table as meaningful participants, decision makers, and in some cases owners in all stages of a project's development. In recognition of this, we have been asked to develop a national benefit sharing framework to ensure that communities benefit more consistently and equitably from natural resource development in their territories. This work focuses on closing capacity gaps, investing in skills and training, and increasing access to affordable capital. In my personal experience, as an Indigenous person who grew up in community not too far from where we are tonight, being a public servant can sometimes be a bit of a surreal and confusing experience. I often find myself questioning whether my work is truly serving the best interests of my community and so many others like it across Canada. But I know that we do have a monumental opportunity to make real transformational change. 
That is truly what makes me excited for the work in front of my team. I think of the many topics that have and will be discussed tonight, from supporting equity ownerships and projects, to advancing self-determination, to the achievement of community-led energy sovereignty, and I recognize how privileged I am to have this role in contributing to advancing progress. Shimi thank you.